just finished reading our next speaker's book, Punished, Policing the Lives of Black and Latino Boys. And I am so thrilled that Ted has invited him to speak here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to award-winning professor, Victor Rios. <laughs> For over a decade, I have studied young people that have been pushed out of school, so-called dropouts. As they end up failed by the education system, they're on the streets where they're vulnerable to violence, police harassment, police brutality, and incarceration. I see these young people through a perspective that looks at the assets that they bring to the education system. How do I know that these young people have the potential and the promise to change? I know this because I am one of them. You see, I grew up in dire poverty in the inner city. We were on welfare, sometimes homeless, many times hungry. By the time I was 15 years old, I had been incarcerated in juvie three times for three felonies. The reason I'm here today is because a teacher that cared, reached out, and managed to tap into my soul. This teacher, Mrs. Russ, she was the kind of teacher that was always in your business. <laughs> I told her a story about my Uncle Reuben. He would take me to work with him because I was broke and he knew I needed some money. He collected glass bottles for a living. Four in the morning on a school day, we'd throw the glass bottles in the back of his van, and the bottles would break. And my hands and arms would start to bleed, and I was terrified and in pain, and I would stop working. And my uncle, he would look at me in the eyes, and he would say to me, mijo, estamos buscando vida. We're searching for a better life. We're trying to make something out of nothing. Mrs. Russ listened to my story, welcomed it into the classroom, and said, Victor, this is your power. This is your potential. Your family, your culture, your community have taught you a hard work ethic, and you will use it to empower yourself in the academic world so you can come back and empower your community. With Mrs. Russ's help, I ended up returning to school I even finished my credits on time and graduated with my class. But Ms. Russ said to me right before graduation, Victor, I'm so proud of you. Now it's time to go to college. <laughs> college me? Man, what is this teacher smoking thinking? I'm going to college. I applied, got a letter of acceptance, and one of the paragraphs read, you've been admitted under probationary status. I said, probation? I'm already on probation. That don't matter. <laughs> but what do teachers like Ms. Russ do to succeed with young people like the ones I study? I propose three strategies. The first, Let's get rid of our deficit perspective in education. These people come from a culture of violence, a culture of poverty. These people are at risk. These people are truant. These people are empty containers for us to fill with knowledge. Number two, let's value the stories that young people bring to the schoolhouse. Their stories of overcoming unsurmountable odds are so powerful, and I know you know some of these stories. These very same stories and experiences already have grit, character, and resilience in them. So let's help young people refine those stories. And of course, the third strategy being the most important, resources. We have to provide adequate resources to young people. Grit alone isn't going to cut it. You can sit there and tell me all you want. Hey, man, pick yourself up by the bootstraps. But if I was born without any straps on my boots, <laughs> how am I supposed to pick myself up? 
job training, mentoring, counseling, teaching young people to learn from their mistakes instead of criminalizing them and dragging them out of their classrooms like animals. How about this? I propose that we implement restorative justice in every high school in America. So we went out to test these ideas in the community of Watts in LA with 40 young people that had been pushed out of school. William was one of them. William was the kind of kid that had been given every label he had been dropped out, he was a gang member, a criminal. And when we met him, he was very resistant. But I remember what Miss Russ used to say, hey, I'm here for you whenever you're ready. <laughs> Over time, he began to open up. And I remember the day that he made the switch. We were in a large group, and a young lady in our program was crying because she told us her powerful story of her dad being killed. And as she's crying, I don't know what to do, so I give her her space, and William had enough. He got up from his de desk, he slammed his hands on the desk, and he said, hey, everybody, group hug, group hug. This young lady's tears and pain turned into joy and laughter, knowing that her community had her back. And William had now learned that he did have a purpose in life, to help to heal the souls of people in his own community. He told us his story. We refined his story to go from being the story of a victim to being the story of a survivor that has overcome adversity. William went on to finish high school, get his security guard certificate, and is now working at a local school district. <laughs> Mrs. Russ's mantra was always, when you teach to the heart, the mind will follow. I believe that in this education revolution that we are talking about, we need to invite the souls of the young people that we work with, and once they're able to refine, identify their grit, resilience, and character that they've already developed, their academic performance will improve. I'll tell you what my teacher did for me. She believed in me so much that she tricked me into believing in myself. Thank you.